Hello, and thanks for joining us on our show, Basic Concepts and the Wisdom of Kabbalah with Dr. Michael Lightman. Hello, Dr. Lightman. Hello, hello. On our show, we are, or on this show, we're going to take a basic concept in the wisdom of Kabbalah and try and explain it in the most emotional, closest way to a person who just started studying. And today we'd like to start with the concept of the light that reforms. And I'd like to ask you personally, when I tell you these words, the light that reforms, what do you feel? I feel that there is a force that is coming and improving me that's coming to me and improving me, that it elevates all of my qualities to a higher degree. Anything that I had, it makes it better. Any quality, any desire, any thought, any trait, everything that I have, suddenly I get a good addition, an upgrade. It sounds wonderful. Yeah. It's very special. And it's something that any of us can get if we will learn how to draw the reforming light. When I heard the, about the concept of the reforming light for the first time, it sounded like something from a, a fairy tale. It's like a child whose mom is ill and he has to go to this far distant place in the forest and if he makes it in time, he'll be able able to save her. Our life isn't a fairy tale, but still it's magical. What is it? Yeah, it's really special. It's a hidden force that improves us, upgrades us, elevates us to a better, higher degree in terms of our thoughts, desires, actions. And the more we want for it to happen, it does. Here, it's no longer magic, but this is really how it is. The main thing is to really want, want what? To want to be better. In our world, you can't change anything besides one thing. What? That you can be better? It's interesting. Try to do anything. Always you'll have many disturbances, many things. It can be worse, for example. Then people will come up to you and, you know, will stop you and demand things of you and who knows what. But better? No one's standing in your way. And please go ahead. Look, I think all people want to be better, for them to be better. What do you mean? It means that it's not that the light reforms the entire world in relation to you, but it is a light that reforms you. What's wrong about me that needs to be reformed? Just one thing, your ego. What do you mean by ego? That in everything you want to improve yourself to be better, strongest, richest, smartest. Everyone wants that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a part of human nature. But what we especially want is for it to also be in relation to others. What do you mean? That I examine myself, I compare myself to others. Look, I want to be number one in everything. Whatever I do, that's how I was brought up. I want to excel in everything. What kind of, uh, I don't know, what kind of grades did you bring from school? Whatever I do, I try to do the best that I can. And it's fun to feel that you're the best. 
So that's ego? Yeah. No, it's not that it's bad. That's my question. It's not that it's bad. But that I want to be better than everyone and at their expense and to gain from being that way. Wait a moment. Now you added at the expense of others. Sure. I don't just want to be better, smarter, richer, prettier, stronger. But I want it in relation to others, to be more than them. So it, it like goes through belittling them, making them smaller, stepping on their head on my way to my success. That's ego. Could be too. So it's a multifaceted mechanism, the ego. It includes everything. Were it not for the ego, I wouldn't see anything in life. Whatever I look at in life, I look at it through my ego. So what in this mechanism is bad and we need to reform to make it good instead of bad? That, by that, I want to climb others. To surpass them, climb on their head. Okay, so let's take it word by word. Light. Many times I heard you talk about the word light. In Hebrew, there is light, all, and ma'ol, like an illumination, are these two different things? Ma'ol, illumination, is an upper force that's felt only by its results. That it influences a person, changes him, and a person sees its results. Meaning, the measure to which he changes, improves, becomes better. That's illumination. Yeah, that's a result of the illumination. And what is light? Light is a clearer force that acts and changes things in a clearer, more physical way. So when we say ma'o, illumination, it's something that I don't exactly understand how it works, but it improves me. Yeah. Now, that reforms, meaning that once I was good, then I became bad, and now it needs to reform me, bring me back to good. It means that in the past, you were really, once you were a good man, a good creature, something happened, what we say that happened to you, we call it the shattering or the, the sin of the tree of knowledge. Me? You too. Because I, I don't remember it happening. I understand. And then you became a big, fat egoist who thinks only about himself. And you want to be more than others at the expense of others. And therefore, this light, it reforms you to the correct state where you become good toward everyone, you connect with everyone. In short, it makes a good person out of you. What's the entire twist for if you're saying that in the past I was better, then I went through something that I don't remember? That's a corruption. It all happened before you. What do you mean before me? It happened with what we call Adam Arishon. The first Adam, literally meaning that nature that exists in all of us to begin with. After the corruption, <coughs> Adam Arishon meaning the first man, literally. That, so that corruption was created in us, and that's how we live. So I was born that way. It's not that I did something. No, no, you didn't exist back then. Okay, so if, why is it that if I draw the reforming light upon myself and it will make me a better person, I understand that when you say better, it's better in relation to others? Yeah. 
Why, if now I become better in relation to others, why the entire... If I was good at first, why ruin it? Why the spin in order to give you an opportunity to correct yourself? And what do I get out of it? Then you will know what good is and what bad is. And in between these two discernments, you will feel alive. I read that Bala Sulam wrote that the light that reforms builds a new... What, what does this light build in my heart? A new structure, a good structure. The so-called Garden of Eden, because then you start attaining those states, you start perceiving those states that are uncorrected in you as help. Where am I now? In neither. You're not discovering neither hell nor heaven. I can discover heaven. Yes, you can. Right now, before I, yeah, yeah, before you pass away and the slave stops. And that's the magic of the reforming light. Yeah. Can you explain? If you will change your attitude toward others from being an egoist to love, to connection, then in your love and connection toward others, you will start feeling the positive force of nature called Creator, and then you will feel that you are good, and that the world is good, and that the Creator is good. That's the heaven. This feeling is called heaven. So, now, I need to eat. You can start attaining it. It doesn't happen immediately. You need to prepare yourself for it. What's better about this status than my current one? That you see everything in a truthful manner. You see a world that is eternal, whole, and complete. That's unending. That doesn't exist. And the sensation of this short life of yours that's so incomplete. And therefore, you have what to ascend to, what to discover. And the reforming light brings me all this good. Yeah. How does it work? It's a mechanism. Are there cl- clear laws to how it works? Is it scientific? Is it mystical? There's an upper force called the reforming light. We're not discovering it in and of itself, but we feel the results of its influence over us. What influence? What, what results? That we ourselves become better, and accordingly, a new reality opens up to us that when we're in bestow, we feel a better reality. Better and better. Are there certain clear, absolute rules as to how to operate the mechanism of the reforming life? Yeah. The law is simple. To the measure to which you love your fellow man, to the measure to which you love others, to that extent, a new vision opens up to you and you feel yourself and the world as good. Who do I love now? Your corrupted self. And what does it mean to love others? That you start feeling that in your inclination toward others, you open an attitude, an approach to nature and the general force of nature 
that's called creator, that you really open a door to the new world, to a new reality. The force that takes me from loving my corrupted self, as you put it, to loving others, that's the reforming light. It passes me from here to there. Yeah. Is there a certain law by which I activate it? Why doesn't it work on me now? Because you don't want it. So how do I enact this mechanism for it to upgrade me? According to how you start treating others, accordingly it works on you. It's like I need to tell myself, Oren, if you want to be better, like Dr. Leitman says, start trying. Start trying. These efforts, they are the ones that enact the reforming light. Yeah. Are there any other conditions or just to try and make an effort in this direction? No conditions. Just to try and be good to everyone. Sure. You can't immediately and at once start relating to others in a good way. But to form some kind of circle around you with which you begin to, with which you become engaged in these good relations, then yeah, do it. Do I have some kind of indication that the lights start working? I try to be good. How do I know that it started working, the light? Are there signs? No. Surely you can identify how the environment will treat you will relate to you in a better way. That's of the usual. It's not something that you even need to guess. Yeah, like it says, if you treat others nicely, they'll treat you the same way in return. But I'm not asking about people. I'm asking about the reforming light. How do I know that I've activated the mechanism? I have here, like, a switch. I open, I close it. How do I know that I activated the light? Do I have an indication? No because it will not be in order to improve and bring good to everyone, but in order to benefit from it yourself. And it's egoistic? Yeah, and therefore I'll have no clear indication. Right. Before I, before we go forward, in the simplest words, what is the reforming light? It is the upper force that exists in nature, the actions of which we can enact on ourselves in order to be better. When do I need to think about the reforming light? All the time. When I get up in the morning? All the time. Before sleep? All the time. Before an important action? All the time. It reacts to my prayers, thoughts, actions, intentions. What does it exactly respond to? It responds to your intention of becoming better. It really feels me? Yeah. It is a force that exists in nature, and this way you draw it. Where is it in nature? There's no place. So where? There's no place. It's everywhere. There's no specific, arranged, defined place. It said that the reforming light is something that we can connect to through studying the Torah. What does that mean? That if you study what our sages said, wrote, and you intend to be like them. Like them means to be a bestower, someone who loves, who helps others. Then that means that you're acting in a way 
in which you're drawing, they're forming light. I understand that the sages say that they're forming light isn't only in the five books of Moses, but also in the Gemara and the Mishnah, and also Kabbalists say that the strongest reforming light exists in the books of Kabbalah. Why? Because really how to draw, practically how to draw the reforming light, how to rise to degrees of love of others and bestow, this is something that the wisdom of Kabbalah talks about, and it talks about it especially in a very clear and open way. I heard you explaining of one, on one of your lectures that if a person sits at home, studies Kabbalah books, it's not sure that he will be able to activate the reforming light, so it's better to study in a group with a teacher. And so why is that important, and how does that improve a person? It's very important that a person enters the right environment and that he starts working with the environment in mutual bestow, that he influences the environment with the help of the light and the environment with the help of the light will influence him. What will that give him? How can he know that he'll advance in becoming better? and becoming better toward them. So because you told me that your definition of being better means to be better toward others, of course, otherwise, what does to be better mean? Just better. Well, there are many things that I'd like to improve. No, no, it's only in relation to love of others, only in relation to closeness to others, so that naturally I want to be superior to others than that's not the good thing. What is then? To think to their benefit, about their well-being. Suppose I succeed in connecting to the reforming light. How will that influence me? What will I become? If you continue at it, then eventually you will start feeling the world in a very special way, that you're in a world where you have an opportunity in every given moment to cause good to everyone. And accordingly, you will feel how the entire world is in the force of good and how this force activates you and you activate it. Even now, of course, and I don't feel it, now you don't. Why? Because you still didn't do anything good to others. So in order to feel how the force of good operates, activates me and others, I need to first of all do something. Then you discover its presence. Look, I'm very edgy. I have zero patience. Will that change me if the reforming light will work on me? Yeah, it'll even you out. Excellent. The changes that the reforming light will make in me will I'll always feel that they're pleasant or there will be some changes that aren't pleasant. It's very pleasant, even though that it demands us to put in lots of effort. Therefore, in the light, if it works on me and it works on you, does it perform the same action or will feel it differently because we're different people? It'll be different, of course. What's different? You're a good person. And it will work on you differently than it will work on me because I'm a bad person. So it's a very personal individual. Yeah. Is it possible that I will enact this force incorrectly and then it's going to be dangerous? No. There's no danger about it whatsoever. When we talk about the reforming light, it feels like someone who really loves me, my, my dad. My dad, I can always call him, he's there for me, all life long. 
am I in the right direction? Meaning the reforming light is even more. He's all, it's all the time sitting next to the phone, expecting to get requests from you as to how to help and how to bestow and how to benefit you. Suppose more and more people in the world will learn how to connect to the reforming light. What will happen in the world? Good things? I don't know, because today the world isn't that good. Wars, rocketing prices, food prices, who knows if there will be food in a year or two, corruption everywhere, violence. The light will come, and what will happen? The light will come and will arrange everything. We'll bring everyone closer to each other. We'll change our thought, our desire. We will feel how dependent on one another we are, that we're like in one family. And we'll have it good, corporeally and spiritually. All throughout history, there were attempts to make the world a better place. I don't think it really panned out. It didn't. So is the reforming light the piece of the missing piece of puzzle that could make the change? Yeah. The reforming light will be able to make the world a better place. Not we, but we need to invite, to draw it. Like you say that you call your dad. That's how it is. You call and it happens. By the way, why is it waiting for a call? Because doesn't it see that the world's in a mess? No, we need to want these changes because it makes these changes in us. It's not that it brings us plenty and abundance on a platter, take, enjoy. No, we need to understand that we're bad, we're egoists, we're really, we have terrible relations with one another, and we ask it to correct our nature, to bring us closer to one another, and then our life will be good. If this is how we turn to it, it'll do it. Okay, in conclusion, what's the most important thing to remember about the reforming light? That there's an upper force called the reforming light that you can turn to and ask it for change, for it to particularly change you, and also ask for the entire world, for all of humanity, and you need to be certain on the inside that what you're asking for will surely happen gradually, bit by bit, personally and in general, and good luck. Thank you very much, Dr. Lightman. Thank you for being with us. Basic concepts, the reforming light, all the best. 